But today I thought we'd talk a little bit about um, veterinary medicine and veterinarians and what we do and just animals and keeping animals healthy. Um, because I think it's, it's, uh, it's fun to do and it's important. So um, let's talk about um, some things that vets do. Everyone has heard of veterinarians. Everyone um, is familiar with some of the things we do. So let's kind of dive in and uh, talk about what animals do vets treat. I'm gonna show you some pictures of animals that either I currently treat or have treated and some of them might surprise you. So obviously uh, veterinarians take care of dogs. Uh, that's pretty common. We take care of cats. Uh, horses are a common one. A lot of people have horses as pets. Uh, cows, uh, not too many pet cows out there, but um, veterinarians are in charge uh, and responsible for caring for all the cows out there and chickens. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of you may have chickens at home. Chickens actually make great pets. And even the ones that aren't pets, the ones that are used for uh, commercial use, you know, veterinarians take care of those. Kangaroos, kangaroos, uh, there are a lot of veterinarians who specialize in kangaroos and marsupials and other exotic animals. Dolphins, I have a good friend who actually works in San Diego with the dolphins. Uh, veterinarians play an important role with taking care of marine animals as well. Birds, everybody everybody uh, knows and loves birds as pets. Uh, and, and I'll back up and say a lot of wild birds um, need care and attention as well. Birds get injured and uh, those, those are responsibility of veterinarians. Large reptiles, alligators, crocodiles, I've certainly seen a few of those in my day, not my favorite, animal to work on, uh, but certainly interesting. Snakes, a lot of people have snakes and hopefully not this one. This is a poisonous, venomous snake. Um, but lots of people have pet snakes and those are actually fun to work with. Uh, rodents, small pocket pets, really common. Tigers, zoo animals and wild tigers. Um, certainly, uh, I've certainly treated a few tigers and lions in my career as well. And that's certainly exciting koala bears, uh, more Australian animals. Uh, here in California, uh, close to the water, we, we do see a lot of marine animals that we treat. Seals and sea lions, some of them get injured, some of them don't have enough food, some of them just get lost and uh, veterinarians are responsible for caring for them. Tortoises, turtles, red-eared sliders, those are really common pets. Uh, Okay, so obviously if you can think of an animal, a veterinarian probably cares for it somewhere. Um, what do veterinarians treat? What diseases, what conditions do we treat? A lot of them are very similar to the things that uh, we go to the doctors for. Ear infections, a lot of, excuse me, a lot of you may have had an ear infection and dogs and cats certainly get ear infections. So let's look at some of the interesting things that dogs and cats get in their ears. I thought you guys would like this. Here's a picture of a mite. It's a little insect that lives in the ears of dogs and cats sometimes. And it can grow uh, and reproduce and it can swim around. And I thought you might wanna see a picture of little mites swimming around in a dog's and cat's ears. And that's something that we see quite often. And we treat that all the time. Look at that, that's a good one. Um, that's just under a microscope and it's kind of fun to see and it's easy to treat, but you can imagine if those were crawling around in your ear, what that might feel like. And uh, that's something we see quite, quite a bit. Um, bone health, taking care of animals, bones, um, not just making sure that they're eating well and, and, and healthy, but Animals fracture their bones just like we do, and uh, we have to be there to help fix them. This is an x-ray of the arm bone. It's the humerus, the arm bone of a dog. And I think you can see my pointer right there. There's a fracture in that bone. So what we did was we took a metal pin and we put those two pieces together just like that. 
and that bone's going to heal in about four weeks. That bone will be as good as new. Look at that cute, cute golden retriever puppy. Uh, fractured humus, fractured arm bone, and that will heal in four weeks quickly, just like in humans. But without that surgery, without those pins, that, that animal would not be able to walk properly. Here's another one. This is a really cute little uh, black bear who are very playful. And um, this bear, as lots of bears do, likes to climb trees. And this one fell from a tree and <clears throat> fractured its leg. Uh, here you see this is the big leg bone. This is the femur fractured in three spots. So this bear, we took the surgery and put a pin in it, just like the previous x-ray you saw, and uh, fix that leg for that bear. Okay, what do we do? Uh, what else do we do? You know, we protect animals. You know, this is Anna protecting Elsa. I think a lot of you have seen this movie. I have kids at home, so I've seen this movie maybe a hundred times. Uh, how do we protect animals? Vaccines. So we give animals vaccines just like people get vaccines and it protects them against uh, germs and viruses and bacteria. That's uh, That cat is looking at that vaccine and saying, whoa, that's a big vaccine. You're gonna give that to me? Uh, but yes, yeah, so we give them vaccines, maybe not ones with needles that big, um, but here's a horse getting a vaccine and to a large horse, that vaccine um, doesn't feel like much, just a little pinprick. And we protect horses against viruses and bacteria. It was a little piglet getting a vaccine. Important because um, these animals can get lots of diseases just like we can get. And a lot of them are introduced through human contact. So it's important that we vaccinate and protect them just like uh, we get vaccines and protection. Okay. Uh, this is the fun part. Um, I hope all of you can hear that heart beating. I thought we'd talk about um, heart health because it's such an important part of all of our lives. Um, this is a typical heart of a, an animal, a mammal, just like us. So this is exactly how our heart looks. And for most of the patients that I treat, dogs and cats, um, they have the exact same heart as we do. Everything is the same. So I thought maybe we would look at some animals and their hearts and talk about them a little bit. So I thought maybe I would ask you guys, if you were here, what animal is this? Um, I think it's pretty clear that this is, <clears throat> this is a dog. And it's actually my dog. This is a Pomeranian, and that is her heart beating, and that is her barking. Um, how about this one? This this is a little. <laughs> yes, that's, that's heard that. Okay, okay. So that's my dog. That's my Pomeranian barking. She loves to bark. Uh, that is actually her bark, um, and that is what her heart sounds like. Very similar to humans. Um, and uh, <clears throat> it's a very common heartbeat that we hear when listening to and evaluating the, the health of an animal's heart. Um, again, this is my dog. Her name is uh, Cuchara, and Cuchara is Spanish for spoon. Why is she named after a spoon? I don't know, but let's move on. So this is another heartbeat and it might be hard for you to hear because it's very slow, but it is also an animal that has a similar heart. And that's what it sounds like. So that is the heart of an elephant. And the elephant has the exact same heart that we do, and they develop similar problems. 
um, as as we develop uh, because they live very long lives. Um, they have the same number of chambers that we do, but the heartbeat is much, much, much slower than ours. An elephant's heartbeat can be somewhere in the 20 to 40 beats per minute when ours are, can be 80 to 120. Um, so I thought you guys would think that's cool. Okay, here's another heartbeat, and this one is a little faster, but sounds similar. That's a cat. That is a that is a cat heartbeat. Okay, and that is a picture of uh, my cat. His name is Chagall and um, he plays the piano. Uh, just a little background history. Uh, <clears throat> he is named after Marc Chagall, who is a famous painter. This is one of his most famous paintings called The Birthday. Little art history there in your veterinary lecture. Okay, there's another heart. Um, I hope you can hear this one. This one is really, really, really fast. And if we think about animals with hearts similar to this, with heartbeats this fast, um, we think about birds. And this is a video of a hummingbird. This is what a hummingbird heart sounds like. And a hummingbird, when resting, can have a heartbeat of two to 300 beats per minute. When the hummingbird is flying, it can have a heartbeat of up to 1,000 beats per minute. That's amazing. And this video of this hummingbird is in slow motion, obviously. Okay, here's another slow heartbeat. So when we hear slow heartbeats, we think of very, very large animals. And let's see if we can hear this one. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. That obviously is the heartbeat of a cow. This is a brown Guernsey cow. Cows have very large hearts that beat very slowly. <laughs> okay, here's another one, another slow beating heart. Stop. I don't know how loud that is. It might be really loud for you, but that's a, that's a humpback whale, a humpback whale. Very large animals, very slow heartbeats. A humpback whale could have 10 beats per minute, 10 beats per minute. That's amazing. All right, one more. This is a good one. I think you'll like this one. Chimpanzee. Chimpanzees' hearts are almost completely identical to ours. They share 99% of the DNA uh, with with humans. So that heart is exactly the same as ours. Sound same, same rate, same rhythm. Okay, let's talk about ways that we keep hearts healthy. And this this applies for humans and animals as well. Exercise. Some dogs like Border Collies love to exercise. Exercise is one of the best ways to keep animals and human hearts healthy. Dolphins love to play. Keeping them playing and active, great way to stay healthy. Look at this baby elephant playing soccer. You know, baby elephants are pretty big, even when they're born. And look how big that soccer ball is. So I can't imagine how big that ball really is. Horses, they love to run. Uh, and a uh, great way to keep your heart healthy, running and exercising. Um, diet, right? Diet is so important in keeping yourself and your heart healthy. You know, this animal here needs to eat lots of vegetables. And I think that's true for uh, humans as well. Eating vegetables and a well-balanced diet uh, is so important to staying healthy. This is a panda bear. and. You know, the reason I put this up here, not just because it's important to eat green vegetables, but it's important to eat the foods that are right for you. So this panda bear has very specific 
nutritional requirements. So this panda bear basically eats bamboo and bamboo roots. So feeding this panda bear the wrong diet would be unhealthy. So eating diets that are appropriate are the best thing for uh, all animals. Fruits, don't forget your fruits. Fruits are such an important part of staying healthy. Fruits and vegetables. <clears throat> watermelon, who doesn't love that? Orangutans love watermelon. Who knew that? Okay, YouTube. Um, computer time, screen time. Not not the best thing for animals or, or for us, so we need to limit screen time and uh, or the amount of time we spend on YouTube eating the appropriate fruits. So cats certainly love ice cream just like we do, but a diet full of sugars and fats um, is not great for animals and it can lead to similar problems and diseases just like we get uh, uh, humans get. Exercise, right? We talked about exercise. Uh, whether you're doing Pilates or yoga or weight training, exercise is one of the best ways to stay healthy. <clears throat> and then important also is sleep. Remember that a lot of the animals that um, we care for as pets sleep a lot more than we do. And it's so important for them to get proper amounts of sleep. Uh, cats can sleep up to 18 to 20 hours a day. Dogs can sleep 16 to 20 hours a day. And, and, and most growing uh, humans need to sleep somewhere between 8 and 12 hours a day. So it's so important to get good night's rest. Just like these two, this is a kitten and a guinea pig. And I guess the reason I put that in here is because sharing time with friends and loved ones, such a such an important part of staying healthy. Look, it's a bird and a kitten. They love each other. They're spending time relaxing together. Uh, a pig and a tiger. Who ever thought that those two would be together and be friends? But they are.